to my very first video. Congratulations! Congratulations! You won. Congratulations! You won. If you're wondering how I turned this cork board into a beautiful, a beautiful acrylic painting, you've come to the right place. Not, you've kind of come to the right place, but a tutorial would be better. Disclaimer, this is not a tutorial. I won't actually give a step-by-step -step on how I made this, but I will show you each step of my thinking, my very scattered thinking process, and how to have fun with whatever you're doing. Enjoy, enjoy. I'm gonna do YouTube now in quarantine. Hello, my name is Roya. I make stuff. Here's a cork for it. I didn't make this. It's from a thrift store. And this does not look great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it look good. How are we gonna make it look good? Um, we're gonna put on, we're gonna make it all marbly. What we're gonna do today, mostly tomorrow, and maybe the next day, and for the rest of the week, I'm gonna uh, make this look good with some acrylic pouring techniques. Basically dump a lot of paint on your surface, and then when you dump that paint on, you can move it around. Whoa. Gentler. And then once you move it around, it'll look very cool and marbly and trendy, and that's what uh, this. I know you're bored in quarantine. I'm also bored in quarantine. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm going to actually take this frame. There's a frame and there's the cork. I'm gonna separate the two. Hi guys, I'm really sorry that I couldn't hold up to your expectations. I know I said I would remove the frame, but I'm a human being and I make mistakes, like assuming I could do that. I'm sorry for my actions and I promise you that I have changed for the better. All right, whatever, now it's time to spray paint and I'm recording in vertical because I'm new to this. Thing I actually just noticed is that it says the bored dudes. <laughs> I'm also bored. <laughs> And now we're gonna wake up my entire neighborhood this morning. Okay, it's time. We're gonna do it. Let's see how it goes. Uh, so this was a bad idea. I decided to put no protection and there's a line now, so... Oops. You know what? Let's just pretend it's primed and ready to go. So in this time, I decided to cover my floor in plastic and also uh, shadow puppets. I don't know what I was doing here. I also can't get over how clean this table is. I have not seen this table as it was since we moved in this house because it's always been covered by this plastic tarp. So I actually have no idea how much protection that this plastic tarp is going to give me so for some extra protection I'm going to use my class notes that I don't need anymore look at all of these notes so now I'm going to spread them all over the place we've got relational model exercises we don't need that anymore we've got answers I might need those, but you know what? Not today. It says, recycle. Recycling is important. Now that we've primed the surface, uh, we're gonna mix some paints, and then after we mix the paints, we're gonna throw it on there, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this down. We're gonna throw it on here, and we're gonna move this canvas around. Right now it's on these four, about to be four cups. And, um, and yeah, we're gonna just do our best. First thing to do, put on some gloves so we stay protected. Make sure you're wearing a full suit of armor. 
like I am. So I have my paint pants. I've got my paint shirt that already has stains on it. And we're off! So, start by dividing a lot of white paint into three empty cups. I'm just eyeballing and adding more or less if I need it. Maybe some more. Squeeze in a bit more. More in the big one. And grab some popsicle sticks or mixing tools and start mixing in different colors. I chose to work with pink, light blue, and a muted yellow mustard amberish color. I'm also adding a little bit of clear Elmer's glue in it. And when you're putting in the blue, drop some and ruin your canvas and try to actually patch it up like no one will ever notice. No one will ever notice that. Um, forget about what just happened by adding more glue and making some nice ASMR sounds. I have no idea what that looks like, but hopefully it looks good. I guess the camera didn't quite pick it up, but it made this very cool effect with the paint and clear glue. And uh, here's some satisfying tapping noises. Continue tapping out all of the air bubbles from the paints you just mixed, and now I'm going to move on to my yellow color. I don't really know how to describe it other than saying this is like a grandma yellow. And for the second disappointment of this video, my camera decided to stop recording because I don't know how to record videos, which means I didn't clear my storage. <sighs> So my phone storage was like, there's not enough storage, you can't use any storage. Um, so it just stopped halfway. But look, I mixed some gold paint with some glue. And now, if I stir it a little bit. What I was actually intending to show you in this part is how nicely the paint would drizzle back into itself. But instead, it looks like I'm trying to feed you gold soup with a fork. Like some bizarre fairy tale. I don't know, like uh, some character wants to get rich in a forest. And some witch told them, like, if they can eat gold soup with a fork, maybe they'll get some cash money. I'm so adamant about showing you what this looks like, so I'll include some satisfying ASMR action for you guys as you're trying to eat this gold soup. Mmm. After you realize you're not going to be able to eat delicious gold soup through a camera, sit back down and pretend to be a drummer, but instead of a drum kit, you just have paint. When you're done your fantasy drum practice, put away all of the paints to make room for pouring the large white paint on the board. Yes. Ah, I'm scared. Okay, too bad. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There's no turning back. Let's go. This is really thick. Maybe I should make this a little bit more viscous. Like, maybe I should mix it up where... Because um, I don't think it's going to move around that much, no. So... We're gonna try again, but with more glue. I'm dumb, there's glue in here. All right, let's go. Yeah. Let me see if I can write my name. Ooh. There's not enough. Hello? More, please. Ooh, it looks like a Pop Tart. Beep. Hey, was I supposed to mix this with water? Mother. Beep. Oh my god, I was supposed to mix it with water, wasn't I? Damn it. Alright, let's go. Yes, much better. Much better. Much better. And once you have most of your paint on your board, you can begin splashing it around, just moving it around, mixing it with the other colors, trying to make some shapes out of it. Maybe try making a Pop-Tart. I wouldn't know what a Pop-Tart looks like. I don't really eat too many of them, but they're pretty good. After placing the paint in strategic places, it was now to do it now. Tip it good. Tip this board just like you should. Here 
there's really no wrong way to tip the board. It's hard to get all of the paint to fall off, but the goal is kind of to stretch the paint over and cover as much surface area as possible. You can also go in with your tools and try to fill in more gaps, continue the process. So fill in the gaps, tip some more, fill in the gaps, tip some more, you get it. Be mindful of what direction you want the paint to go in as you're doing this. So if you would like the colors to stay in one area, so what I'm trying to do is keep it in a diagonal kind of composition. Just remember that, keep that in mind and stay aware of that. What I really enjoy about this process is that you don't completely have full control over what happens on the board and in a way it's kind of freeing. Now what I'm doing is going in with my gold paint and adding a little bit of accents with my fork, my plastic fork. It's kind of interesting to use a fork instead of any other object because you have like those variations and lines coming down from it and you get like these little tiny lines and these like dominant lines and it's pretty cool. So um, I'm just going in the corners trying to use my best thinking and abilities to figure out like where would this be best placed. What I just showed you was done in real speed, but now we're gonna speed it up because you're literally watching paint dry. It is that slow. It is a super slow process. You get a little bit of a good arm workout and I think it looks cooler once it's sped up. You get to see um, some parts of the painting move faster than the others and it's just a really neat effect. What I was aiming for is kind of like a marbly effect. So I think that's kind of trendy these days. Like you see it a lot on phone cases and stuff like that. And um, the colors that I picked, I really wanted them to mesh with the room that I'm sitting in. I wanted to have like kind of a calming kind of effect to it. So here it is. It's mixing a lot more, especially um, the lines that were previously defined are really thoroughly mixed together. I think right here I was thinking that maybe it was too colorful and it's time to tone it down with some larger gaps of white. So I mixed a little bit more white paint and I'm just putting it in some specific areas so I can just go in and add more paint as needed. And once you've done that, just go ahead and tip it over some more, maybe tip it in like a circular motion. Uh, I'm just trying to cover all the diagonals here and it's just a really cool visual thing to see as it's happening especially once it's done very quickly and it's sped up. Add in a little bit more, just keep going in. And don't think I was done with the tools like the fork and the knives and the popsicle sticks. You can have other things from your kitchen like a straw. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a straw, blowing out these parts of it, and I have a little bit more control with what I'm mixing. The nice thing about using a straw is that it keeps that like flowy mix, the flowy liquid mixing. If I were to use a palette knife or a popsicle stick or something that's a little bit more rigid, then the result would be more rigid. At this point, I wanted to add a little bit more gold paint to the center. So here I am taking my gold enamel paint and not even mixing it with glue. I'm just throwing it on the middle, hoping for the best. The thing is you have to work very quickly, so it's not like the paint will dry anytime soon, but um, you just want it to mesh well with the other colors before layers dry together. So putting gloves back on, more tipping. Whatever colors you decide to add in later stages, especially the gold, like the very thin strips of gold that I'm doing here, they'll, they're gonna have more definition by the end of the painting. My tip is if you want softer colors blended together, like the pink and the blue, try to blend them in the very beginning and add them in the very beginning. And later on, for the colors that need a little bit more definition, just go in towards the end, like what I'm doing here. It's like adding bits of detail towards the very end. Hello, I am back and I put chemicals on my face. I'm also done the painting. Or... I don't know if it's a painting, it's still a cork board, but I put paint on it. Whatever this is, I'm finished with this piece. And I really like it, not gonna lie. It's pretty nice. As this is my first video, part of what I wanna do on my channel is a little bit of analysis as well. Sometimes, not all the time. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. We'll see. One of my favorite activities to do is, for some reason, I like to interpret meaning from different objects. So whether that be artwork or like a movie, I don't know, or like the Rorschach stuff. This, basically, I want it to be kind of like the Rorschach stuff. Like, I like to look at abstract things and see like what kind of objects do I see in it 
and see if there's any meaning in those objects for my own life. But now that the painting is done, I want to give you guys a, a couple of seconds to figure out like, what do you see? What does this remind you of? Does it remind you of your childhood? Does it remind you of that person at the grocery store? Does it remind you of something deep and vulnerable that you don't want to disclose to anyone so you actually won't leave a comment? This could be land mass. I don't know, what do you see? Let me know what you see. What do I see in this painting? Even though I never actually intended for a meaning behind this piece, uh, I'd like to give it one anyway, or I'd like to analyze it anyway, just for fun, because this is what you do for fun in quarantine, unfortunately. Uh, what I see is actually a hand that's kind of curved upwards. So if you, if you think of this as like a claw, like fingers, or maybe this way, Ugh. if I do it like that, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a hand. What I associate with hands is the whole aspect of control. I kind of want to take a moment to talk about, um, you know, my channel. So when I see this hand, Honestly, okay, if I'm being completely honest lately, I've been thinking a lot about my own hands in the process of filming this video, in the process of filming future videos. I mean, I have some coming up, um, but that required me filming my hands. I honestly don't like how my hands look that much, um, especially in front of the camera. They're kind of um, not very photogenic. You know that, that video of that hand model that's like, Oh, I love my hands. They're like, oh, I have a hair tie here, of course. I love my hands. They're like a beautiful olive tone. I don't do the dishes. I don't do gardening. I so for me, that means no cooking, no cleaning, no taking out the garbage, no opening cans, no opening windows, no opening doors, no gardening, no sports, you know, no, 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 a million no's. I'm not like other hands. <laughs> My hands are not like other hands, I guess, in that case. They're not manicured and they don't look perfect, but, you know, at the very least they can make things. I would rather not have them on camera for people to see. But the nature of my channel is for me to make things and show you guys the process of how I make things. Obviously, I'd have to put my hands in the video no matter what if I am showing you guys how the process of how I make things. I kind of need to abandon this fear of like what other people think my hands will look like and kind of throw away that whole, you know, anxiety behind someone's gonna say like your hands are messed up. I know, I said it already. My hands are capable of making stuff despite their kind of gnarly image. I'd rather take hands that can make things rather than very decorative hands. However, it would be really nice if I had both. But I tried. I tried both. It didn't work. So I'm sticking with the, the hands that make things. I want to talk a little bit about image and creating an online persona and what that means. So now that we're in the quarantine, I'm sure there's going to be a surge of people who are just chilling on YouTube. Um, possibly people who want to also create stuff, create their own content, um, but they're a little bit afraid to. So the original purpose behind creating this channel in the very beginning was that um, I wanted a way to narrate and document my process um, because before what I would do is I would just kind of upload them as Instagram stories and then put them on Instagram. I kind of want the narration, I also want the practice with public speaking. Something that I find is challenging is putting out my opinion for a large number of people. And that's kind of something that I also want to practice. Also another thing, other than making stuff, I really love video essays. I don't know if I'll ever make a video essay. I'd like to, but it's, I don't know, it's a lot of work. Just my opinions on things and I, I want a crack at that. Being able to speak publicly requires actually a lot of vulnerability because there might be a number of people who really like what I'm doing, they really like my presentation, they really like my editing skills that are really common and not unique at all. <laughs> there might be some people who m become eventually fans of my content. However, I'm still very subject to criticism and I don't know what people are gonna say. I know that there's a lot of people who can get critical on platforms like these. But I also thought like, why should that stop me? Why does it matter that much? It's kind of scary to put myself out there. I have no idea who's gonna see this. They might judge me for what I do, but at the same time, why would I let that stop me from doing what I want? 
the thing that pushed me to finally get over the edge and actually go for it and make my YouTube channel um, was just embracing that I'm, I'm brave. Like, you have to be brave to do this. I think it's worth a shot. The beautiful thing is you actually got the energy and you had the motivation and the discipline to actually put something together that was meaningful and you wanted to share it with the world, no matter what that is. It's worth a shot. You'll probably develop a thicker skin. You're, you'll probably develop some more discipline. Um, you might gain a following. You might get a few new friends. And for me, the most important thing about this is that I'm thinking a lot about my friends as I'm creating this. And the people who love you will love to see what you love to do when you put it on YouTube. This might be one video, this might be until the end of quarantine. I might get super famous and that's a lot of responsibility. I might get two views. I might get no views. I might get negative views. I actually, um, I played Laser Quest once when I was nine years old at a birthday party and uh, my score was minus nine. I don't know how that happened, but I was so bad at Laser Quest I got minus nine. So I might get negative views, I don't know. But to me, what's currently the most important is that I actually got off of my glutes and I decided to create something. And uh, it's, it's been a long time since I felt comfortable saying that. So if you're considering starting a channel, go for it. I don't know. Thank you. And I might see you next time. <laughs> Take care.